For some time now, a question has occurred to me uh, on the subject of Rasputin, the, the, who is known as the Mad Monk from Russia in the early 1900s. How would he be perceived by feminists, and specifically female feminists? And I think it, it actually poses an interesting question, because Rasputin uh, was known for his healing abilities, and this has always been uh, what one of the mysteries around him, in addition to his death. Uh, because what, there's one such woman, known as Olga Lokthina, who claimed that Rasputin healed her sister's fiancé by putting a cross on his chest, and uh, essentially told the man, kiss the cross on his bare chest, and believe, and the man was healed. Uh, another lady was named, known as, I have to read my notes here, Anna Vyubova. I think I've, uh, Vyubova, Vyubova. And she was a friend of Empress Alexandra. And uh, this, this Anna was in a, uh, a train crash, a very vicious, very nasty train crash. And her legs were crushed. And she was, from what I've read, at death's door and Rasputin prayed for her and it was able to, she, she uh, it, it's been described as almost came back to life but it's not as grand as that because she was a paraplegic she, she could not walk but she was a strong believer in Rasputin uh, another strong believer was Empress Alexandra who is alleged to have had an affair with Rasputin. I have my doubts about this, but I am certain that there would have been some degree of attraction to him because Rasputin seemed to be a very, very focused, very strong-willed man, uh, a very resilient man as well, who was able to travel across Russia um, vast miles through very, very cold climates, with real uncomfortable living conditions. And uh, from what I understand as well, he I think he, he dug out a hole and, and, and worshipped there for, for two weeks. As some of what Rasputin did just beckers belief. I mean, I'm, I'm, I know that other people will have probably topped his uh, endurance accomplishments, so to speak. But the most famous person, I think, that was really healed by Rasputin was the Tsar Nicholas II's son, Alexei, who had haemophilia. And on several occasions, Rasputin was said to have been called to the palace and he healed the, the Tsar's son by standing over him and whispering to him and, and, and praying to him. Uh, and, and several people actually witnessed this. I, I did also hear of a case that the... That the 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 boy was healed by just Rasputin instructing uh, Alexandra, instructing the mother. Now, it's also been a debate of how Rasputin did this. But did did he did he do this by hypnosis? Hypnosis, or was this achieved by auto suggestion? I would suggest that the subconscious mind came into play. Uh, and this was really how people were healed. They had this belief, and the the deeper mind was able to heal the body uh, based on this belief that Rasputin could do this. Uh, now, it's interesting to note that Rasputin himself did have an interest in hypnotism, but how effective he was at this strategy, I don't know. I believe that if he was alive today uh, and he healed somebody in the royal family, be it in England or, or whatever whatever country, he would probably be trying to market this as a product. He'd be trying to sell this as a seduction, uh, excuse me, as a system not unlike Ross Jeffrey's speed seduction and be making vast sums of money off it. Now, how would he be perceived by female feminists? It's an interesting question.
Uh, I think that female feminists would receive him positively now in terms of the fact that he was able to heal people and now he may even be more, if he was alive today, more supportive of the uh, feminist ideology. But I think where he would receive a lot of criticism would not just be in his seduction of women. Uh, I heard he had very grey seductive eyes, but the fact that he would approach them exceedingly directly, he would just walk up to a woman and start touching her, that would not go down well today. That that would get him assault charges and so on and so forth. Now, what I don't think female feminists would necessarily admit to is the fact that they would be attracted to the man's boldness, the man's assurance, the man's reputation, status, uh, the the man's ab- admiration from other women, social proof, and the fact that he he's a sexually experienced man. In addition to that, if he did have an aura of mysticism about him, I think they would they would really enjoy that. And I think that they would also, like, if the man did have a great reputation uh, and, and say he wasn't doing the uh, the approach of touching and uh, borderline assault, I, th- I think he would go down very well as part of the agenda. So it, it, it's really, I think female feminists, it's, it's a very mixed bag between now and how he'd be perceived. And, he, and, and, and for female feminists to looking back on him at that period of time in the 1900s, how would they perceive him then? Would they like him as a healer? But they would probably see him as a bit of a a man on the edge of sexual assault uh, and and be willing to... uh, He would be very open to criticism, but I think he also had a lot of um, social ability, let's say, that would allow him to have a respect from feminists in that regard. I think there there would be a sexual respect. Would there be a social respect? I think some female feminists would, would would love the fact that he was this healer and be very open about the fact that he's this healer and that, there's, that he was loved by many women. But I think there would be others that would be very critical of this man, very sceptical. And perhaps he, he may be labelled a, mis, uh, a misogynist. Um, his, his ability to walk up to women and just touch them, he did get kicked, he did get slapped. But he wouldn't be able to get away with that as easily now. Now, male feminists... I think male feminists would not like him. And that would be because he does have success with women. And although I think there's a lot of male feminists that are very well-meaning gentlemen... I think that there is also a percentage that have a hidden agenda themselves... Translation, they want to be, they want to show massive support to uh, the feminist agenda because they simply, they want sex. They want something out of it. They wouldn't like Rasputin if he was receiving all of the attention. There would be an element of jealousy going there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick back round, get to my conclusion over time to time periods. They'd be attracted to his raw animalistic element, his mysticism, his uh, the fact that he has social proof of the royal family, that he can heal people, he can heal women, he's healed men, and he's healed a boy, he's healed the Tsar's son. Uh, although it is noted he didn't heal the boy from haemophilia, haemophilia, haemophilia permanently. Excuse me. But... His element of uh, 
of I think he would be very open to being accused of being misogynist and sexual assault and I think there would be a lot of ladies that would want to make an example out of this man this is my opinion on on Gregory Rasputin thank you